I am your host, James Yoder, and I am wearing a Roan shirt, R-H-O-N-E. It lets me go to work. I can go to the bar. I can go to a holiday party. I can toss on a sports coat over top of it. Super flexible, super awesome. Get 20% off and a free shipping at roan.com slash chat sports. You got to use promo code chat sports, 20% off your order and free shipping, R-H-O-N-E dot com slash chat sports. All right, guys, use hashtag Michigan or Super Chat to get your questions answered live. This Super Chat and live Q&A comes from our Wednesday signing day show, but you might be watching it on demand. We'll put it up on the channel on Friday or on Saturday. First question comes in. Hey, James, big fan of what you do. Been a fan since 2018. How do you feel about Diamond Edwards? How do you think Diamond Edwards would feel about a possible quorum return to the team? All right. If you watch this live, I answered this a little bit ago, but I did want to address it so we can have it for the uh, on-demand crowd. Um, I don't think he would love it. Okay. Um, maybe that's not surprising, but I do think him and Blake Quorum are close enough, and Diamond Edwards feels like a good enough team kind of guy that he would probably embrace it. Now, I do think next year, Diamond Edwards is last year at Michigan, no matter what. Um, he's clearly shown the speed. He's shown the size, of course, and uh, he's got the stats in games that he's starting. But um, what Michigan has the ability to do if Blake Corum comes back with him and Diamond Edwards is not force Edwards to uh, or to force uh, Blake Corum to have 30, 29, 31, 28 carries per game. Um, if we look back to the early season, it was kind of a disappointment that Michigan had such a poor out of conference schedule that they didn't need to use either guy early on. And then when you got into the season, the Penn State game is the one I think is really interesting because the Penn State game, both guys were healthy. Maybe one of the only games this year, both guys were healthy in a competitive S game. And what happened? 180 yards, 170 yards. And that is what I would expect next year. I don't think Diamond Edwards would transfer. I'm sure he wants to be the man, but I do think you could get a rushing attack and maybe a running back combo, the likes of which we haven't seen in college football in a very long time. Bill Graves coming in. Do you think linebacker play will be an area of uh, uh, will be here of our defense against TCU? I mean, I do think that um, Junior Colson, Michael Barrett, they have got to stop Max Duggan from scrambling out of the pocket. I mean, these Michigan's best two linebackers so far, best two tacklers, top two tacklers on the team. Ninety-five tackles for Colson, sixty-seven for Barrett. Um, five and a half sacks combined between the two. Barrett's got those two interceptions. Three QB hits between the two, but it is not uh, the pass rush that I'm that concerned about. It's the containment. Don't let a linebacker or don't let a tight end um, kind of come out from the line and, and get away from the linebacker core. Don't let Max Duggan scramble like he did against Kansas State in the Big 12 title game. These two players, if they can contain Max Duggan with their assignments, it's so much different than Ohio State. C.J. Stroud, a.k.a. Colbert Stroud, does not run. So Michigan didn't have to worry about that. And I think that's uh, something Ohio State might have to consider in the future is Michigan could drop back seven, sometimes eight, into coverage on C.J. Stroud, and he didn't know where to go with the ball. Max Duggan, he'll do that, and he'll take off 15 yards. Michigan's got to have a spy at least majority of the time, Barrett, Colson, and when they do get the chance to spy, if he takes off, you've got to hit him to the max. We've said in a few shows, hit him, make him see ghosts, make him regret uh, the fact that he might, uh, you know, be trying to beat Michigan, beat uh, uh, go to the College Football National Championship game, make him think about it in the second half, the second half where Michigan has dominated this college football season. All right, guys, don't you hate wearing dress shirts? If you take it to the dry cleaners, you pull it out of the dryer, the washer, whatever, you got to hang it. It's always wrinkled. The collar is always stinking. It never fits right. Not with today's sponsor, and that is Roan. I'm wearing this Roan dress shirt. I'm wearing it all over the place. Got a couple of these bad boys. Worked a holiday party this past weekend. You can take a Roan dress shirt to the office, to happy hour, out with your buddies. You can wear it to the golf course. You can wear it to the office anywhere you want. I love the Roan commuter dress shirt is what I'm wearing. It's one of many shirts there at Roan. You saw the versatility on our live show. I spilled it on myself. I had the sleeves rolled up. Now I rolled them down, and now I'm wearing with a sports coat. That is Roan. It is super, super versatile. The dress shirt was due for radical reinvention, and Roan stepped up to the challenge. The commuter shirt is the most comfortable, breathable, and flexible dress shirt known to man. Mobility is everything, and Roan's comfortable four-way stretch fabric provides breathability and flexibility. It leaves you free to enjoy what life throws your way. From your commute to work to 18 holes on the golf course, looking good is easy. The commuter shirt can get you through the workday and straight to whatever comes next. Go to roan.com slash chat sports. Use promo code chat sports, no spaces, 
uh, and to save 20% off your order and free shipping. That's 20% off your order when you head to Roan, R-H-O-N-E dot com slash chat sports. You use promo code chat sports. No spaces. It's time to find your corner office comfort. The link is in the live chat and in the description and comments of today's video. Go to Roan and get an awesome dress shirt. This thing is super breathable, super awesome, stretchy. It's amazing. Wear the dress shirt. Wear it to work. Work to the golf course, roan.com slash chat sports, 20% off your order. Clayton Amboy says, I think we're witnessing college football changing before our eyes. The Blue Bloods are using the rest of college football as a farm system. I'm okay with it. Let the other programs sift out the dud. So um, I addressed this question in the live show, but I do want to kind of talk about it uh, here. We're going to put this video out over the weekend. Think about this. Um, Top 60 quarterbacks in college football, historically, I think 10 years ago, top 60 quarterbacks of any class, freshman, sophomore, junior, senior, whatever. Um, typically, those 60 guys who are like impactful quarterbacks will be on 25, 20, 23, 24, 28 rosters, right? Um, but now I think going forward that quarterbacks can be the position that's most impactful, where you'd have a high four-star, high five-star Um Let's just say J.J. McCarthy didn't win the job this year. He knew about that in spring practice. Maybe he decides, oh, I'm going to pop over to Penn State and take the starting job or something like that. Um, I think quarterback will be a situation where top 60 guys that can make an impact, big-time starting quarterbacks, will be distributed over 45 teams or so. But where I think the opposite of that is linemen, linebackers, wide receivers, running backs. We can have multiple guys in the field at one time. You'll see guys like Stanford, Arizona State, Indiana, they will transfer to Michigan even if they're not guaranteed a starting role because they think it's a better program, better chance to win, better chance to go to the NFL. I think that's what will happen. Quarterbacks will transfer at the higher rate and make a bigger impact as a starter, but position players across every single position will transfer when they make an impact as a sophomore, freshman, junior, go to a big top 10 player, the Blue Bloods of college football like Michigan, uh, even if they're not guaranteed a starting position, offensive line, defensive line, linebacker, tight end, we're already seeing it here in December of 2022. All right, guys, all together now. I'm excited about the college football playoff. It is coming up on us before too long. It's Christmas weekend coming up, and the college football playoff is on New Year's Eve. So give me a go blue. Let's put the good vibes all together now. Go blue. Type it if you're a Michigan football fan. I will give a few shout-outs here in the live chat before we continue to roll on with this show that we'll put up over the weekend on demand. Max Juden says go blue. Iceman Comp 25 with a go blue. Jacksonville Zoe, a super chat legend here. Go blue. Columbus Rob just says General Booty. Okay, all right. You'll have it. Two or three more go blues. Ryan Craster says go blue on the live chat. Make sure you get down and give me a go blue in the comments. DJ Key says go blue. Um, uh, RW is making a comment on our uh, one of our other sponsors. Hey, it's not. Hey, use promo code go blue RW. Use it because trust me. Okay. Uh, Ralph Wolf says go blue. Columbus Rob says go blue. All right. Never bold eleven. I've been so excited watching JJ these past few games. I hope the offensive coordinator allows to have him open up the offense and air it out. He's flourishing in the spread sets. Keep it up. I mean, look at those two Diamond Edwards runs against Ohio State. The reason they happened is twofold. Zach Sinter and Olu Oluwatimi. The two of them somehow blocked like four guys, right? They both like blocked a guy off and then blocked their main guy. And then J.J. McCarthy holding the ball out there and then just the just the, just the the threat of running held that outside linebacker who could have maybe made, come across the play uh, the field and made a play. Nevertheless, um, I think that the fact that JJ didn't have spring football, he missed the entire spring. Then he had to split snaps with Cade McNamara, who was the starter for the first game is, uh, held him back a little bit this year, but now 28 days between games. This is kind of like another fall camp for JJ McCarthy, another spring practice for JJ McCarthy. I would expect him these next two games, TCU, Ohio State, Georgia winner, that we see the best J.J. McCarthy we've seen this year by a big time margin. And thank you so much for the Super Chat Never Bowl 11. That's what I'm expecting from J.J. McCarthy. Brad, I pronounced your name earlier proper, uh, properly. I'm not going to try again. What do you think will uh, What do you think will have a breakout? Or who do you think will have a breakout? Jackie, so just correct me on these. Uh, who do you think will have a breakout uh, next year at receiver? Lots of unseen freshman talent. I mean, um, it's... If you guys missed it, Andrew Anthony is not a freshman, he's a sophomore. Uh, a little bit of an injury. We'll see if uh, if things shake out here. But um, if we look at what Michigan's got, right, three true freshmen next season. Uh, Cornelius Johnson, 
Roman Wilson. Do we expect both of them to be back? Maybe, right? Maybe one of them will be back. Maybe both of them will be back. Um, Darius Clemens, though, is the freshman that I think will make the biggest impact next season. Michigan's got three freshman wide receivers that uh, were highly rated that came into the 2022 class. Darius Clemens, though, for me, is the one that I expect to pop into the starting lineup, depending on what Andrew Anthony does in the 2023 season. All right, guys, if you have yet to do so, make sure you are following me on Twitter. It is at James Yoder. It's down in the comments. It's in the description and now is in the live chat of today's show. Um, 10,000 followers were hit this week, so appreciate to every one of you who has followed me on Twitter, tweeting out 10 to 15 times a day on Michigan football news and rumors, and I always take shots at Ohio State, Becky and Chad, go blue. I saw that in the live chat. So make sure you follow me. It's down in the comments in the description. And uh, let me know what you guys think on Twitter. You can tweet at me anytime. Just don't DM me. I'm, I'm done with DMs on Twitter. Let me know what, you guys, what year you guys became a Michigan football fan. I've said it over the last few weeks. 1991 uh, is the year. I think I remember Desmond Howard. I remember the Heisman Trophy ceremony. I, I remember spots of, uh, of that uh, year, the touchdown against Ohio State, punt return. Uh, Notre Dame as well. Uh, RW, good channel, good content. Yoder, thank you so much. Uh, let me know what you guys think. What year did you become a uh, Michigan football fan? Jacksonville Zoe in 1983. Uh, down in the comments, on demand, as we'll put this video up over the weekend. Let me know what year you became a Michigan football fan. Michigan Highlight says became a Michigan fan in 2016. He's 16, so I appreciate that. Uh, 93 from Iceman Comp, and we'll go from there. Let me know down in the comments. Mark Miller, as Ryan Stan says, 27, 2007, I'm sorry. Um, P Maximus, you just stop it there in the live chat. Uh, do you think the announcers for ESPN will ever see Michigan and Big Ten being equal to the SEC since all they ever talk about is how Georgia will win again this year? Not even going, giving us a chance. Go blue. Who's who's got it better than us? Nobody. Jim Harbaugh, uh, Jack, if you didn't know that one. I right, look, let's take a look at the Big Ten versus the SEC. The Big Ten has two teams in the college football playoff for the first time. Let me take a little pick, drink of this. A little, hmm. little parch. Nobody from Michigan High Flights. Um, gosh, Mac Juden says 2008. Ugh, that is a dark road there, buddy. Um, but Georgia lost five defensive players from their team last year to the first round of the NFL. They took a step off. Now, Michigan lost David Ajabo, Aiden Hutchinson. Um, others right and uh they've changed the quarterback right their backup quarterback from the first game is now the starting quarterback their backup running back is now the starting running back their third string tight end is now their starting tight end so michigan's lost players too ohio state you know, they lost two first round wide receivers but if michigan and ohio state have both the chance to face georgia and both lose i don't want to hear any excuses from the big tens the first time that the big tens had two teams in the college football pl playoffs no excuses anymore. I said it back in October. The Michigan Ohio State game to me was for the national championship game. I'm rooting for Georgia because I don't want to have, give Ohio State even the chance to win the national title. But one of those teams better beat Georgia. If not, the SEC should and does have all the bragging rights going forward. All right, subscribe to the Michigan Football Report. I saw a guy saying, enough to ask for subscribers. Well, hey, pal, we said 25,000 subscribers. And the Super Chairs are just making us drink whatever. We're going to put this on the channel this weekend. Merry Christmas to you. Cool Motis is all my life. So make sure you guys are subscribed to the channel, guys. Um, it's the Michigan Football Report from Chat Sports. If you're watching, just hit that damn uh, subscribe link. Uh, also, the link is in the live chat and the description Click on it, send it to a friend, make sure they know where they can find the best Michigan football content anywhere in the world. Most watched show, radio, TV, podcast, whatever. Also, you know, of course, on YouTube. Ryan Stan says some Michigan OS score for Michigan OSU next year, Yoder. I mean, look, Michigan's gonna be preseason number one next year. I've got an itch on my ear. Um, add six or seven starters or starter level players in the transfer portal. JJ McCarthy is a junior next year. Diamond Edwards, maybe Blake Corm. Michigan's going to be preseason number one. I have absolutely no doubt in my mind that that is going to happen now. So um, it depends on what Kyle McCord does at Ohio State. Or maybe Devin Brown. I think McCord wins the job there. Uh, but Michigan's going to be favored by 10 points. The, the, the tables have turned. Two straight wins, three straight seasons, not a win for Ohio State. So I'm going to go something similar to what we've seen the last two years. Michigan 45, Ohio State 27. That's my prediction for next year. Thanks to the question, Ryan Stan. How excited, guys, are you for the future of Michigan football on a scale of 1 to 10? 
I have a couple shout outs here. First five people in the live chat, I will give a shout out to, but also go down in the, uh, the comments and, uh, and comment one to 10, one being not very much at all. 10 being super Jacksonville Zosa is nine Michigan high plates, 11, 10 for Michigan football, 10, uh, Iceman com says 10 as well. Uh, Ger Goggle says Michigan 58, Ohio State 24. I hope so. Um, and uh, and let me know what you guys think. Uh, Ryan Stan says I think it'll be McCord. It better. I think it's McCord too. The young Elway, what we call him at the Michigan Football Report. I think he's gonna be a star um, up there with JJ McCarthy, but uh, he'll get a shot next year. 11 for Kevin Bot Workshop. Uh, 10 plus for Ryan or for Ralph Wolf. Uh, appreciate everyone who is commenting. Let me know down in the comments in live chat how excited I are for you. I am a 10, and Michigan is the favorite to win the national championship in 2023. Let's see if they can get done in 2022.